The 805 Focus is brought to you in part by Nonprofit Connect. Nonprofit Connect provides superior leadership tools and resources so nonprofit leaders and board members can make valuable decisions to move their organization forward to a sustainable and vibrant future. More information on services online at nonprofitconnect.org. Focus. I'm Dr. Cinder Sinclair with Nonprofit Connect, and we will be bringing you the latest on your favorite nonprofits. So get ready to be inspired. Our special guest today is Silvana Kelly, and Silvana is the executive director of the Breast Cancer Resource Center right here in Santa Barbara. Welcome, Silvana. Thank you for having me, Cinder. It's a pleasure to be here again with you. Yes, and your organization is doing such important, critical work for so many people, touching the lives of so many. And so would you just start by telling us a little bit about what's going on these days? Certainly, thank you. So we've been around for 24 years now as Gosh. a service to our community. All of our services are free of charge. Oh. And we function as a non-medical component to women and men dealing with breast cancer providing support services and educational programs to them free of charge. Gosh, that's really important. So it's important for people to know that your services are free. Yes, yes, and, and, and it's always been that way. We want them to be able to come to the center and access information that they need to move on and make decisions about their breast cancer diagnosis. Or even prior to breast cancer, if they're having issues with their breast, they can ask us questions. Where do I go to get a mammogram, for example? Oh. Where do I go to get a free mammogram? How can we help them access health care? It's a very important part of what we do. And then when they do have breast cancer, we're providing them with support services. So we like to say that where we come in is once they leave the doctor's office, they come to us, and that's where another stage of healing can take place. Oh, gosh. And so tell us a little bit about the services that you offer. Yes. So we have our, um, twice, a, twice a month, we have a support group that's offered free of charge, and we do that with, with a licensed social worker. It's important that we have skilled help to mm -hmm. provide these types of support mm -hmm. services. But a big majority of what we do, we call lay patient navigation. Mm. And so people can come in and talk to us as peer counselors as well, and we can walk them through what are the next steps? What can I expect from a diagnosis? Where do I go? What are the practical aspects to taking care of oneself when they're dealing with cancer? We do a lot of that. I think what people don't realize about mm -hmm. us as well is that we provide outreach services in the community. So we have a woman that's in the community going to certain targeted populations and talking to them about breast self-exam, yeah. how do you do that, mm -hmm. and also when to get a mammogram, um, and, and again, how to access those services to do so. So we want to make sure that people are aware of early detection mm -hmm. as being an important part of their um, long-term health and also mortality rates are improved when we have early mm -hmm. detection with breast cancer. So that's one component. Another component of work that we do is education overall and wellness. So we speak to the survivors that um, th there are many in, the, in our Thank community me. and in the world. So women want to know, well, how do I continue with my health care? How do I continue to make sure that I'm doing all the things necessary to live a ha healthy lifestyle? So we make sure to implement programs that speak to that. So when you um, deliver these programs, mm -hmm. is it typically for an organization, for a single person? How, how, how do you actually deliver the programs? We deliver them in at the center, 
and we do that one-on-one -on -one, oh, so okay. people can come to us one-on-one -on -one with oh, counseling right. and support and we also do it in group okay so right now since we've been dealing with COVID mm -hmm. the organization has made a big pivot to providing all of our services in a virtual world okay so e even with the integrated therapy program we have that virtually and what I mean by that is meditation we have um, Reiki that's done, distant Reiki is what it's called, and we also have Qigong, which is a slow movement type of, of body work mm -hmm. and also a form of meditation. And we have sound bath, which is, um, we have a lady that does uh, chimes and, oh. and different singing bowls, they, they're called. So people are able to do this in the safety of their home, uh -huh. and they enjoy it. And we have to make sure to also keep the staff uh, safe and healthy as well. Yes. So we've pivoted in this direction and it's working well. The clients have embraced it. And most importantly, we want to make sure that they know we're still here and that they feel connected to some support services that they don't feel that they're alone. Many of us think that we all have some kind of family, but there are people that don't have family. So we act as that family component yeah. for them. And it allows them to be connected to others also when we do that in a group setting. So it makes it wonderful. That is great. Yeah. Well, let's say that there's somebody watching and mm -hmm. they don't know if they have breast cancer, mm -hmm. but um, they're kind of suspicious there might be something going on and they're not really sure even what questions to ask. Mm -hmm. What should they do to get, a, get in touch with you? Well, they can call us. So mm -hmm. we have someone there at the, at the center every day. Um, they can also email us and we always respond within 24 hours. Mm -hmm. And basically what I would tell them once I, I, I spoke to them mm -hmm. or even write to them is to make sure that they, they find a, a doctor, their mm -hmm. primary care doctor. And if okay. they don't have them, I most likely would guide them to the Santa Barbara neighborhood clinics mm -hmm. because I think they're a great resource for us and or Planned Parenthood. That's another great resource for people to mm -hmm. access to get that clinical exam. You have to start with the clinical exam okay. and then from there find out if, if they have a lump, is it suspicious, then what are the next steps and then we help guide them through what those next Gosh, steps are. That is so important. Mm -hmm. And so I can only imagine you collaborate with all the different providers, Cottage and yes. on and on and on. Mm -hmm. we, we're, we're a resource center, so we act as a conduit okay. to all the various medical facilities in town, whether it's Cottage or the Women's Imaging Center, Sansom, um, the Cancer Center here, the Ridley Tree Cancer Center. So we're familiar with all the players, the healthcare uh, mm -hmm. providers in town and so we have that way of connecting people and if you have somebody that's a little reluctant mm -hmm. um, because there might be a language barrier oh, right. then we will help them and and make those appointments for them because oh. it's important not to drop the ball we don't want people falling through the cracks especially yeah. if they have something suspicious going on so we're there on that side too that is great. Yeah. So I would imagine a person can, can find out quite a bit by going to your website too. Yes. And so they could m probably make a financial donation if they were inspired by the work, that, the great work that you're yes. doing. Yes, and, and they can also find our calendar online oh, uh -huh. for all of our services. And for those services that are being provided virtually, the calendar contains the link to access the virtual oh, services. That is, that's a great yes. idea. We've tried to make it very convenient for people because we know that it's just been a challenge while people are at home, how to get the information easily. So we're, we've provided that. But speaking to the financial part, Sundar, I think what's most important is that People need to understand that we are an independent organization. Mm -hmm. We stand we stand independently. We get support from the community. So we depend heavily on the community for donations and financial support. If we don't have that, we're not going to last. Yeah. And I think people need to know that there is a need and even during COVID, you think people were just at home, but there are still people getting diagnosed with illnesses yeah. and, and breast cancer being one that is so frightening. And it's been important for us to be there for them. 
and the amount of people that still came to the center and called we did it safely mm. we did we make sure to do distancing and wear our masks so everybody feels safe and comfortable it still it still is happening and I'm just glad that we're there to help walk them through and lend a helping hand I think it's been mm -hmm. very important to do that. That's so important. Mm -hmm. I bet a lot of people are really scared when they get the diagnosis or sort of suspect there might be something going on and they don't. Yes, they are. And I think what's, in, I think what's important to understand is that fear comes from a place of not, not knowing, mm -hmm. not being educated about something, not knowing what to expect. And what we do is we help to soothe that fear mm -hmm. by letting them know what are the next steps and, they, and to know that they can depend on us mm -hmm. and that that one visit just doesn't end there, that they can come back later, they can come back in the middle of their diagnosis or even after their diagnosis when they're ready to mm -hmm. take advantage of the programs. I had a lady tell me not too long ago, one of our clients, she said, I didn't know that your services were here, but once I found out about them, I was able to take advantage after my chemo and after all of my treatment because I was in a place where I could actually accept them oh, gosh. and work with it. So that was just so wonderful to hear. So letting people know that at any time during their treatment or after their treatment, we're there for them. Gosh, that is, you know, and it's so amazing that you are funded strictly through donations in yep. this community. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I know all those donations are tax deductible. Yes, thank goodness, <laughs> yeah. they still are. Yeah, It's yeah. important, yes. And we also have, um, we, we do write some grants, but we're, we're a lean and mean kind of group when it comes Sounds to like staffing. It. And I'm sure a lot of other nonprofits are too, so they, they understand and, and I would like the community to understand that every dollar that is spent uh, or provided to us, that 75 cents of every dollar is, is going to the services and programs. That is great. That's very good on our That's part. That's very good, very yes, good. Yes. Yeah. Very lean. That's Very a lean. Way to, way to be. So, um, oh, I wanted to ask you about events. Do you have any events uh, each year yes. to raise funds or get we the word do. out? We part, part of the fundraising process is our events and we have two a year, mm -hmm. one in the spring and that's our Thrive event and we have it as a fashion show. Oh. And so our clients are the models and oh, we do that idea. in the springtime and it's really a wonderful uplifting event mm -hmm. having women feel feminine again and it's just a celebration and it's a time for the women and their families to celebrate recovery and survivorship so it's a wonderful way to honor them and That's in the wonderful. fall we have what's called pink week and mm -hmm. that consists of our gala event and also a webinar series that has many medical components health care mm -hmm. lifestyle components for people to learn more about now and in the future after after their treatment what is, remind me if you would, what is the National Breast Cancer Awareness Month? What? October. 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 I thought it was October. Yes, October. So we call it Pink Week for our, okay. for our activities during October. And we have many people in the community that come to us and ask us, oh, could you please present to our group of employees, tell us a little bit about what you do. Oh. So we do a lot of that sort of outreach as well during October. But we're happy and available to do it any time of the year. That's great. Yes. So you could go to Rotary Clubs yes. or any kind of service clubs. Service clubs, women's um, clubs, a lot of a lot of um, uh, corporations. Oh, we were just at uh, True Digital last year. Uh -huh. They did a pie throwing contest that was kind <laughs> of fun. And so we're out there in the community, and I hope that people will will seek us out, and we're happy to to speak to their employees or their groups and let them know about what it is we do. And we've also been collaborating with others in the community. We started a, a collaboration with the Organic Soup Kitchen. Oh. We thought it was very important to have the clients be able to have nutritious meals. Mm -hmm. So every Wednesday is when they can come and pick up some soup. 
and also we started um, a relationship with Rooted Santa Barbara and they're a plant-based nutrition okay. organization and we're going to be working with them on developing a series of, of nutritional educational programs um, that's going to be coming soon. So we like to try to address the wellness and lifestyle element of people's care. So that's one of the, the processes that we're doing and our education at the same time. That is so important. Mm -hmm. Boy, you folks are busy We're over busy. There. We're busy bees. Lean and busy. <laughs> yes. And, um, and, you know, making the best of this uh, COVID challenge. Yes, we have. We've, as I said, we've pivoted to providing many of our services in a virtual, in a virtual platform world and also knowing that we still are at the center so people can call mm -hmm. us. We're happy to do virtual um, support one-on-one -on -one with them so mm -hmm. we can set that up without a problem. And we're there to speak one-on-one. -on -one. A lot of our work is this face-to-face -face meeting uh -huh. and that literal hand-holding, yeah. if you will, when people are diagnosed because it is a sensitive topic. Yes. And a lot of women don't know sometimes where do I begin what are the questions that I need to ask so we just right. help guide them through that and when they do know they have other questions that we can mm -hmm. you know expound on that as as they move forward in their treatment and their journey I'm sure they see you as their angels I hope so I hope so being a survivor myself I feel oh, like really? I come from a place of understanding yes and understanding but also being that they can see hope mm -hmm. and know that oh, yes. there is a point that they're going to get to where they're going to be healthy again I think it's very um, it's necessary it's necessary in terms of that coping and and fostering hope it's it's just vital to to what it is we do to see somebody that understands what you're going through and yeah. able to speak to it. The doctors do a wonderful job of, of dealing with, you know, taking care and healing you, curing cancer, mm -hmm. and we take care of the healing that takes place inside. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. That hope is so important. And having a positive vision of, oh, here's someone who is so healthy and they have mm -hmm. survived. Yes. And there were, sometimes you think about, oh, my hair's going to fall out, but it grows back. Yeah, yeah. It grows back. Look, look yeah. at Silvana. Her hair is beautiful. I think to to deal with children, how do how do they tell their children when oh, they're going yes. through these types of, of changes, and we help them through that as well. That's important. Mm -hmm. So we have a couple minutes left. Is there anything else that you would like for the community to know about your work? I think to know that these services are vital to the recovery and survivorship of, of women and their families that are going through through this journey, to know that we're here for them, mm -hmm. and to know that the reason why we exist is because of that, because they need us, yeah. and also that we depend on our community to support us. Yes, We are hand in hand. With, with the medical community. And even though people don't necessarily venture down a cancer path, um, that if you do have to come upon that door, that you can walk through it and we're there to help. That's beautiful. Do you think mm -hmm. there are very many communities that have a breast cancer resource center? There aren't many like us. But what we see now nationally are cancer centers that are providing patient support services. And I think that is so wonderful because it's mm -hmm. needed. So yes, people are going to have questions about their care. What are the other components of their care that they mm -hmm. can implement? Is it yoga? Is it meditation? Um, some people like to read and find out more information. So you have a library. So a lot oh. of cancer centers are providing that. When we first started the organization 24 years ago, it was a novel concept to have patient support in the way that we were doing uh -huh. it. 
and we continue to do so and we still continue to provide um, a service where people can talk to us one-on-one -on -one and talk to survivors which is quite different when you go into a medical facility a lot of times oh, right. they don't have that time frame to sit with you for an hour or whatever it takes to answer yeah. your questions so we feel that gap oh gosh Silvana, thank you so much for being with us today. You're welcome. And also for all the important work you're doing that touches the lives of so many people. Yes, thank you for the opportunity to tell it to our community too. Hooray. And thank you for joining us on 805 Focus, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>